This video is for troubleshooting guidance for users on site for the CTS fuel recirculation unit, including how to change the filters and check the valves are open. First thing to check on your fuel recirculation unit is the inlet valves and the outlet valves are in the open position. This allows the fuel to flow. So we check this before we'll actually turn the unit on to start it. When the unit is switched on, you should have the mains power light, the internal system power light, and the internal fuse OK light. If the internal fuse light is not illuminated, then there is a problem with the internal fuse inside the box. The fault light will be illuminated and the system won't run until the internal fuse has been inspected by a qualified engineer. When the filter block light illuminates, we need to check that the filters have been need to be changed. You always have a spare filter on site. You need to ensure that the valves are in the open position also. The unit will not run again until an engineer or the end user has changed the filters. To change the filters, we need to ensure we isolate the power. We isolate the outlet valve and the inlet valve. We'll then place a container underneath the bowl and we'll unscrew the drain valves. This will drain the fuel from each bowl into a container. Once the fuel is drained out, we'll unscrew the bowl. Ensuring that you keep the O-ring seal in position. We'll change this seal with the filter. The canister removes and should be disposed of correctly. The canister is then replaced by spinning on. Tighten by hand, just enough to feel it tighten. Replace the O-ring, reassemble the filter, tighten, close the drain valve at the, at the base, repeat for the outlet filter, ensure you get the filters in the correct orientation. The inlet filter here is the water block, the outlet filter which is smaller is the finishing filter. When happy, Restart the fuel flow and turn on the unit. The full recirculation unit has two inputs to now a low level sensor or a gauge connection from the tank to enable the interruption of the operation of the unit if there's low fuel in the tank. Also, if fitted with a drip tray sensor, if the sensor is lifted, i.e. there's fluid in the drip tray, the amber light will illuminate and the system will pause. Once the fault has been cleared, the system will return to normal. The system should automatically reprime on the next run cycle of the unit. However, if it doesn't reprime on the next run cycle, cycle the power, restart the unit immediately, and it will then continue to prime through. It should only require one priming cycle. Thank you for watching this troubleshooting video on the CTS fuel recirculation unit. If you have any further questions or comments, please contact your distributor.